LaTeX is a good system for typesetting documents of all types. But when we're trying to typeset mathematical equations, this is where LaTeX comes into its own because it's got a very good system for setting up and displaying equations. So we're going to look at some basic examples of creating mathematics in LaTeX. So in our document, we've got a simple line where we're just saying that if we want to do mathematics within a sentence, so within a paragraph, we need to use the dollar sign to start and end the mathematics environment. So at the end of this line is an example where we're putting x1 at the end of the line. So this is an example of doing a subscript. So the underscore indicates that LaTeX should typeset what's in these curly brackets as a subscript of the value x here. So if we turn this into a PDF document and display it, we can see that our sentence ends up with x1 at the end of it. And we've got the dollar sign in here, which we had to put in as slash dollar because it's a special character. We see it as it starts the mathematics environment. So let's say that we want to do a superscript rather than a subscript. So we make use of this symbol here to indicate that it's a superscript. Run that to turn into a PDF document. And now we can see we've got x1 rather than x subscript 1. So a common thing we might want to do is to have a list going from, say, x1 to xn. So if we want to have dot, dot, dot to indicate that the x1 is the first element and xn is the last element, we use the c dots command, which is three dots, one after the other. And then we'll just end this off with our xn at the end of the sentence. Run that. And here we go again. So now we see we've got x1 up until xn. So that's a very simple example of doing mathematics within a paragraph. So let's say we want to create an equation, which initially we want to have that equation numbered. So this equation will be numbered 1. So what we do here is we use the equation environment. So let's just say here is an example of an equation. And then we've got our begin equation and our end equation. So that starts and ends our environment. And let's just put the equation for a straight line. y equals a plus bx. Turn that into PDF. Take a look. So here we've got an equation labeled 1, y equals a plus bx. So although there's a space between those, in maths mode, LaTeX doesn't put spaces in between things unless you explicitly ask for a space. So let's say we don't want to give this equation a number. We need to include the AMS Maths package into the document. And now we put stars in after the equation. So then if we run this, it will compile normally. And then we'll see we've still got the same equation, but there's no number after it. So let's put that number back. So we turn it back from equation star to equation. And let's say that we want to reference this equation. So we first of all need to put a label into here. So this is attaching a label to this equation. So I've just given it, given it EQ at the start um, of the name. And we're going to refer to this equation as straight line. So let's say that we want to refer to this. So let's say a quick. This is an equation below in equation reference and then the name of the equation. So compile this document. We usually need to do it twice when we're putting labels so that LaTeX can cross-reference things correctly. So now you'll see that it's referring to equation 1 below. So what further things might we want to do? So let's say we want to put in another equation. This is another equation. Let's put this one into our equation environment. And as an example, let's take a look at what things look like if we've got square root in there. So let's do, if we've got a quadratic equation and we're looking for the roots of these, we've got x equals minus b plus or minus square root of and it's slash square root for the environment b squared minus 4ac and all of this has got to be divided by 
2a. So we put this within a fraction environment. And if we run that and take a look at our document, hopefully we've got something that looks as we might expect here. So the slash pm is for the plus minus. The frac bit has two bits in um, the curly brackets. The first bit is the numerator, the second bit is the denominator. And then within the square root, we've got the bit that we're trying to um, put underneath the square root sign. So that's what we've got in our bit here, the b squared minus 4ac. So just to round basic things off, let's say that we're working with angles and we want sines and cosines. We just have working with angles. We might have something like, let's say, sine of theta. So slash theta allows us to bring up that symbol. And slash sine allows us to typeset sine slightly differently. And of course, I've forgotten to put these within the dollar signs. So I need that to tell later that this is moving into maths mode. As you can see, it changed color in the editor anyway. So we'll just scroll down here. So now we've got sine theta down there.